So I'm joined now by Scotland's most capped and top point scorer, Chris Patterson. Uh, first of all, Chris, uh, with the Pro 12 season nearing its end, what have you made of Edinburgh's campaign? Uh, Edinburgh have um, started the season really well, really strong during the, the World Cup period. Um, topped the league in the first few weeks, actually. Um, and, 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 you know, there, and, you know, he struggled to keep it going, but, but um, once they got some, some internationals back, and other teams got internationals back, uh, their, their, their form kind of plateaued, then peaked again. So I think they've had a, a, an interesting season. I think it's, it's probably started better than they hoped, but um, there was a longer stretch in the, in the middle where they maybe weren't as effective as they'd like. But um, they've won a lot of games, they've won more games than last season. Um, good players, I must say, they've got a really good squad, they're good individuals. Uh, not quite out of it yet, but uh, a, bit, a wee bit frustrated, I think. They'd like to score more tries, but uh, some, some, some really good individuals here. I think they've probably got the, the ability to, but I think it's very, very difficult for them to do that. They've got three fixtures left, two of which are away, one away uh, in Leinster, one away in Munster, and then their home games, the final game against Cardiff here at BT Murrayfield. So three tough teams in Leinster and Munster, both fighting for a place in the top four. Playing teams away from home is always difficult. Top teams away from home is always difficult. So uh, I think Edinburgh's seventh at the moment. Probably need to win at least one, if not both of those away games, which is difficult. I think they'll get points in them, but whether they'd win both, I'm not sure. Oh, I had a great time. Um, it was my first professional club. I'd played a couple of games for Glasgow uh, as an amateur uh, way back in 1998 or 90, yeah, 98, and then I signed professional in 99. So the game changed massively in my time with the club. Um, professional rugby found its feet, professional rugby found uh, its routine, it, what it was, the makeup of it, how often you trained, how long you trained, how many games you played, which leagues you played in. So it all changed. Uh, through my career, but I, I had some fantastic times and the things that stick out most aren't individual games. I was thinking of this earlier, it's, it's the way we played. Edmund played this brand of rugby that was, uh, it was very expansive, it was brilliant to play, great fun to play, probably played too much rugby at times and, and you know, <laughs> tripped ourselves up, but, but what sticks out was the, the fun the fitness and the, the camaraderie of the team uh, playing that open brand of rugby. I think it, it is there a change, not a massive change. These guys you mentioned were all at state schools who went on scholarships to private school education. So there's maybe a change there. Um, but the door's always open, Scottish rugby. Whether it's school or club, we, we want to help these guys along as much as possible. For those who want to become uh, or want to continue playing rugby, be it amateur or professional, we can help them in every way possible. And, the pathway from schools through academies um, and age grade teams is, is good at the moment, um, but you, you have to continue to drive that because you need the young players coming through to, to fill the void at the top. I think, I think rugby is really important for a number of reasons, and there's two types of rugby. There's professional rugby and there's amateur rugby. Now, usually when you say that, you... Um, it's inferred that one's right, one's wrong. I don't believe that. I think they're both totally valuable, but different entities. They're different, but one's not better than the other. They're different. Amateur rugby has to exist. It has to be fun. It has to be enjoyable. It has to serve a purpose of camaraderie, of team spirit, or for people who maybe don't want to be professional rugby players, but do want to play rugby. Um, and that's the biggest part of the rugby playing population. Most of people who play rugby aren't going to be professional. Professionals are only the 10% the at the top, if that, 5-10% globally. Um, so it's important that, that both sides, of the, or both kind of elements of rugby progress and, and develop. Well, professional rugby didn't exist when I was uh, when I was a young player. International rugby did, obviously, and I was inspired by watching Scotland. And, I, and my dream was to play international rugby, to play to play for Scotland. Um, and that probably wouldn't have changed now. Now, even though now professional rugby exists, it's a career path, it's an opportunity uh, to earn a living. I still 
maintain the reason I played was to play for Scotland, not to be a professional player. Um, but in order to play for Scotland, you have to be professional. So it's a it sounds terrible, but it's almost a byproduct of of fulfilling the dream. Well, I was studying PE teaching at that time at Murray House in Edinburgh. Um, so probably I'd be involved in sport. That was my drive uh, as a youngster. Yeah, I was studying PE teaching. So whether it be uh, teaching PE or, or, or coaching sport or be involved in development of sport in some way, shape or form, that was always my, my goal. So uh, I still do that now in my current job with Scottish Rugby. I do a lot of coaching across all different levels, from grassroots to professional to age grade to academies. So um, I still really enjoy that and, I, and that's where my, my drive was as a, as a youngster. <laughs>